Driving results in business these days takes something special. It's a combination of the right info and the right energy. Pam Moore has both and is here to help you avoid the pitfalls and guide your business and life by leveraging and integrating social media, powerful branding, and digital marketing. Welcome to Social Zoom Factor. Now it's time to live life zoomed. Hi there, Zoomers. This is Pam Moore. Welcome to Social Zoom Factor. Today, this is a take five episode. This is a little shorter than some of my other episodes. And I just want to give you the mind of the marketing nut for five minutes, all right? And today, the topic is brand humanization. It is hard for you to get through a day, an hour, without seeing or reading or hearing somebody, some expert, some marketing guru talking about brand humanization. And I'm raising my hand, I'm guilty. I will admit there is a lot of content out there that is just fodder. Some folks are just trying to attach on to a word or to a name so they can get clicks and likes and shares, whatever it is they're looking for. However, the question is, is there a need to understand what brand humanization really is? We're going to talk about that today. And I'm going to quickly answer that question for you because we only have five minutes. Yes, there is such a thing as brand humanization. What I'm going to do is put this in a nutshell for you. Think about the most memorable experience you have ever had with a brand. Why was that experience memorable? And I want you to think about that. What is it about that experience that makes you remember it? Was it something that made you feel good? Was it something that made you think differently? Was it something that helped you to do something better? Was it something that taught you how to do a skill you didn't ever know how to do? Or was it something that tasted good? Or was it just something that was fun? Maybe it brought you together with other people. Chances are, if it is a positive, memorable experience, other than things like taste and that type of thing, It was an experience and it was something that you remember because it was the way that they made you feel. And food can obviously make you feel that way too. But the thing is, if you think about social media and why it is so very important that we are understanding what is brand humanization, is that you need to remember when you log on to Facebook, when you log on to Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you may be, even if you are looking at a logo, or you were looking at a person behind the avatar, which is picture that would be on a Twitter profile. Okay, so when I log on to Twitter, and I see a human being there, I see somebody's Facebook profile, it is a human that is behind that. When I'm looking even at a a brand, there are humans that are behind that logo somewhere, I would hope within that organization. And what brands need to think about is just a simple word, the word relate. And Tim Burroughs, one of my buddies online and on Twitter, I'm going to give kudos to you on this one because he sent me a tweet. I had posted something about brand humanization and he tweeted back to me and said, Pam, to me, it's just really about being relatable. And I think he's absolutely right in that it is about being relatable. The reason to me that it is still both about relatable and humanization is that you need to figure out how you are going to relate to human beings, okay? You must understand who is on the other side of that avatar, who is on the other side of that Facebook profile, who is the human being that is reading your post on Facebook, who is the human being that is receiving your email, picking up their mobile device on a Saturday morning and deciding, number one, if they're going to open it, deciding, number two, are they going to click a link that you've provided for them to learn more information, maybe listen to a podcast, or are they choosing to hit the unsubscribe button at the bottom of the email. You better understand your audience. You need to get in the head of the person who's opening that email on a Saturday morning. And you need to understand who are they? Do they have kids? What time is the best time to send them an email? What time of day or night or week of the day should you be reaching out to them via Facebook, via LinkedIn, via email? Where are they in that time of day and time of week? What is the best way to reach them? Okay, are they on the soccer field at two o'clock on a Saturday? If you are reaching out to me via LinkedIn on a Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m., the chances of you getting me there are about 
0.01%. If I'm your target audience, you need to know that that is my behavior. Now, the guy that lives next door to me, he's probably has a different story. He has a different agenda. The woman that lives across the street from me, she's got a different agenda too. And she has a different schedule. I hope that you understand where I'm coming from with this. It is about relating to human beings and being able to have a conversation with them that is going to help you meet your business goals and help them achieve whatever goal they are trying to achieve. And I always say your mission is to figure out where your target audience is hanging out online and figure out how you can have the most valuable, relevant conversation with them that you possibly can. Hope you have a wonderful Zoom in and human day. That's it. If you're ready to zoom your business and zoom your life, then don't let the end of this episode be the end of your journey. Visit socialzoomfactor.com slash zoom for incredible free resources and guides. And be sure to join the Social Zoom Factor mailing list so you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time on Social Zoom Factor. Zoom Factor.